Hey, hey, blue table fit. Whoa, that is like saturated with orange or something. Well, whatever. That's what it is. All right, so listen up. First off, project count right now is 36. Usually I like to keep it cooking at about 45 to 50. So I've got slots for a couple of new projects. Yeah, there you go. Oh, do I keep getting better looking, maybe? All right. So I've been not playing miniatures battles, but doing role-playing games, which is my absolute favorite. And in my fantasy world, I'm running two or three games at a time, mostly, if not completely, with miniatures and terrain. Ah, and I'm living the dream right now. Ah. My primary game for the last year or so has been online. I use Roll20. Hold on a second. There we go. I use Roll20 and I've got some really good maps. I was on a, a Patreon and downloaded all their maps, which were awesome. Now that game is 5th edition and it came to be because an old friend slash client of mine from 10 years ago approached me, he's like, hey, do you want to play some D&D? Oh, by the way, would you run it? And I'm like, all right, awesome. I'm going to do a whole thing based around you. And so I got an old high school buddy of mine in on it. And my 20-year-old son and also a guy, apparently an old Blue Table fan, a younger guy from the South, named Glenn, and he runs a place called Mind Tour Gaming, I think it's called. So I'm going to give you a link in the liner notes. So go subscribe, support him with your likes and positive vibes at least, because he's really good. He's a great human, and he's a great dungeon master as well. And that's my group. I really, really, really enjoy it. And... I've been thinking of adding maybe one more person. I don't know what I'm going to do. And at first I thought I'd just do like a throwaway adventure. I didn't know it would turn into anything. But I wrote a whole scratch built thing and we just finished session 21. And that's actually pretty beefy for a campaign. My campaigns usually last 15 to 25 sessions. An adventure takes about four or five sessions to complete. So a whole storyline. And of course, campaigns for a role-playing game can last many, 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 many years and have different groups and interconnect somehow. So there's that. And the setting was uh, supposedly Hyperborea, which is a, uh, an old-school rules-type game. OSR is a shortening for that. And that's, a, that's sort of a movement in the role-playing game community to get back to... 70s, 80s type of role-playing games, and there's a lot of great companies that put stuff out for it. Uh, Goodman Games, uh, there's one Dungeon Crawl Classics, and I really love it. I wish I had more time for that and had a group that was interested in that type of rule system. But everybody knows 5th edition. It's the 40k of the role-playing world. And, oh, by the way, I have to keep my eyes on my phone. I'm expecting a client to come by. And he may be here right now. Hold on a second. Hello? No. Spam call. Yeah, want to help us commoners out? Take care of them robocalls. Make those go away. It's eating my life. Uh, there's a thing you can do on your phone, uh, an Android at least, like star 662 star, don't quote me on that, do a little bit of research on it, and it'll take those spam calls and automatically just block them. It'll be like, they're not going to give you the option to pick up. All right, <clears throat> let us continue. So Hyperbo the Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea is the setting, and it's a pretty cool setting. And I was going to follow it, but I ended up basically just homebrewing and doing everything from scratch. And my, my games tend to be pretty overpowered. It's, they, get out, they, they, they get out of control quick with all the magic items I give away. And character generation is just off the scales. 
in terms of what you can get, and it gets it gets broken pretty fast. And my son's character at eighth level does like 150 damage around with the stuff that I'm like. I didn't think it through, so now he's firing six things a turn, and uh, away we go. <laughs> but none of that matters. I challenge them. I make interesting opponents, interesting tactical scenarios, an interesting story. We've had a, an amazing amount of fun with it. Uh, the, the group is on ice. By, and by the way, they show up every week. No one's late. Everybody's ready. I'm ready. I'm a great DM. I really should be recording my sessions because I hope to put myself out there for uh, not just paid DMing but doing a Valhalla type thing. And by the way, that's just for fun. Something that would be interesting to do. All right, let's move on. The second game that I'm running is Dune. Dune. Now, I read the books back in the 80s when I was growing up. Not the books. I actually just read the first book. And it left an impression on me. I really liked it. And now, of course, I'm rereading uh, the first book, and everything like makes more sense now. It's a much, it's much richer, and I love it. The game system. I've shown. I've talked about this before. Uh, I don't think I have the rule book around here. But the rule system is really good. It's put out by Modifius. They do get a shame on you for poor editing. Oh my gosh like multiple mistakes per page of just like, really dear Modifius let me just read your books in 10 hours I can probably get rid of at least two-thirds of the things that are inconsistent I mean geez well you know me I don't like to complain about stuff but that just that just that just plain but because it's so beautiful it's the art is incredible the layouts incredible and it's just like what? So like, for example, the skill Mind Palace, when you look up it up on the list of uh, talents, they're called, it says Mind Place. So the spell check didn't catch it, but it's not right. So Mind Place, Mind Palace. All right. So Dune, uh, Three weeks, so we didn't have any role playing last week, which was Thursday. So all three of my games were axed. Uh, and the fact is, over the holidays, you just can't get everybody together. Or you got to find people that still want to get together. So with Dune, uh, that required more preparation than anything. It's a hard science fiction setting. It's based on somebody else's ideas, so I can't just sort of make things up as I go along, for the most part. I've talked about this in another video. And my first session, I had eight people sign up. I had, yeah, I had eight people signed up. And guess how many actually showed up? One. I had a session with like one guy where we made his character, we made a house, we talked about it. And that was good because I realized that first session I would not have been ready. I would have done some, I would have gone off in directions that wouldn't have made sense. That extra week to really knuckle down and make all that, make all those graphs and spreadsheets and everything, that really helped get that realisticness. So I've created a super rich environment for Dune. And we'll see if it pays off. It is hard science fiction. It's not, you know, it's. Like, there's, there's an economics lesson in there. And, uh, yeah, I'll be making a video about that. You guys will possibly be impressed. And I'm excited for it, though, because everybody loves Dune now, and I'm getting these old, old, old fans, and since I'm doing it right and doing some really amazing things with it, maps, miniatures, I've got so many NPCs. I'm, like, I've been creating whole houses of people and their motivations and what are their skills and ah so much like I need spreadsheets with multiple tabs to sort of track everything and it's and but it's coming together this really muscular story that I want to tell it's really amazing and so there's that that's Friday nights it's in person my second session I did I had six people that was really solid Tomorrow, I think I might be cracking eight. 
and that's going to require some fancy footwork like you're really when you get to eight players that is <coughs> excuse me a different game yes I'm drinking out of a mason jars that's my Oregon Ruts all right yeah that's drinking out of a mason jar is like comforting to me all right my last game I had an artist slash friend of mine contact me and say, listen, I want you to run Dungeons and Dragons for my family and friends and drive out to my place to do it. I'm like, all right, I'm up for it. Let's do it. And I'm bringing my 20 year old son with me. I told him he didn't have to do it, but he was, he was into it. Yeah, that's weird. My guy hasn't shown up yet. He's probably caught in traffic. Traffic can get bad in, uh, in Salt Lake. All right, now. So, I was like, all right, I wanna do my own thing. I want you guys to come into my setting. And he was like, actually, we've all talked about it. We don't want any homebrew and we don't want any house rules. We wanna learn to play fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons strictly by the book. And I'm like, awesome, let's do it. That's a little different than what I normally do, but it's good. And what I've learned is by running my first game, the, the Hyperborea game online, uh, is that I really didn't give fifth edition a chance. It's been well play tested, obviously. And frankly, working with the, in the, within the parameters of that system is pretty good. Like, it works well, it has definitely has a feel. It's not as crunchy as Pathfinder. And you guys know that I, since 2008, I was running Pathfinder 1.0. And by the way, I have 210 Pathfinder books, uh, which I'm first edition, which I'm trying to sell off. And there's groups that are interested in that. I could do it real easy if I wanted to ship them, but uh, I don't know, I think it's like 120 pounds of books. Like it's not, yeah, like a, a book, a lot of them are modules. Yeah, probably an average of a pound a book. Yeah, it's a lot. It would be really expensive to ship them. But I, on average, if someone wanted to buy the whole lot of them, I'm putting them up for $4 a book. That's cheap. And uh, that is really something else. So anyway, Pathfinder's super crunchy. Uh, fifth edition has some technicality to it. It's not bad, and it would take very, very little to get it to where I think it would have the granularity and the miniatures, uh, the suitability for miniatures battles. That's really the thing. And so I went back, I tried to find an official publication for fifth edition, and I finally settled on Isle of Dread, which is an old... I think 1979 module that used to, it was super common, there, there were like a zillion of them everywhere, and it's where you end up on like this, it's like a Jungle Island, King Kong, Conan the Barbarian, swords and sorcery type of thing, and it's just perfect for what I want to do. And I'm reusing the miniatures from the Badlands game that I did for Valhalla, and I'm super excited about this, because that game uh, with the, the Isle of Dread game, which is in person, will have miniatures as well. So I'm running the two miniatures games, and I have a collection now where I can take almost any module, and I just already have the miniatures for it. I have a video somewhere in my channel where I got everything out and showed it, and I did not, and I was like, oh, it'll probably take about an hour to set things up. No, it took three hours with two people to get everything out and then and break it down and put it back in the bins. Oh, I, was cr I do not want to do that again. What I do want to do is get a studio with enough floor space to actually just permanently have them all on display. That'd be awesome. No more bins for my miniatures. Only display cases. Or probably display shelves. I don't want to put them behind glass. Although, glass is cool. But for me, there's something kind of off-putting about a glass case where, you know, you open it up. I like like a shelf. Of course, then you gotta spritz them with a little canned air once in a while to keep them from getting dusty. 
All right, guys, well, that's about 15 minutes. Listen, I'm still alive, I'm around, I'm cracking it every day. Blue Table Painting is alive and kicking amazingly. Almost at 18 years, I started soloing in the summer of 03, officially started in January 04, and I've just been, I've just been going and going. And I like it, and I've wrapped my head around it. I'm 52 now, guys. Can you believe that? I started it when I was, what, 34, I think, 35? And yeah, that's right. That, that adds up. That math checks. And it's been, it's been really good. It's been a ride. All right. Well, those are, my, those are my games, and that's the miniatures battles that I'm doing, and that I really enjoy most, is miniatures battles as storytelling. And I do plan on getting another, uh, another 40K army going and go to local tournaments. The tournament scene in Utah is crazy. There's like two tournaments a month around here. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on, and a great player base. I mean, if you're into 40K or miniatures battles in general, Utah is an amazing place to be for it. It's just really outstanding. Yeah, that's really weirding me out. I wonder where my guy is. All right, well, off I go. Thanks for tuning in, and definitely get something set up over the holidays. I would love to have it. I, my crew is super strong right now, and uh, let's get it done. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you got a little bit of inspiration for the day. Demon fire of happiness! Oh, it's still in there. I'm holding back the enthusiasm. <laughs>